Hi. Let's talk about the celiac trunk. The celiac trunk is the first major anterior branch of the abdominal aorta coming off at about the level of T12 and going out to the viscera. It's the dominant blood supply to the derivatives of the embryonic forga. And typically the trunk itself is not all that impressive. It's very short, but there are three branches that are quite lovely. We have superiorly here, the left gastric artery. The left gastric artery is going to supply blood up to the esophagus. It's also going to be one of the dominant blood supplies to the lesser curvature of the stomach and its branches will fall over both sides of the stomach. There's also a splenic artery. We'll see more of that in a little while. And a common hepatic artery. We'll see more of that in a little while as well. So let's turn our attention to that common hepatic artery. I'll trace out the, the trunk for you right there. The common hepatic artery has two major branches. The hepatic artery proper, or HAP for short, and the gastroduodenal artery. The hepatic artery proper, we can see it's kind of, there's a little bit of torsion to it there, but it's coming out that way. There's a vein interrupting our view there. We can see one of the early branches of HAP, the right gastric artery, coming down along the lesser curvature of the stomach. That right gastric artery, anastomoses with the left gastric artery, which we can see here, to supply the lesser curvature of the stomach. So any of the gastric arteries, those are lesser curvature branches. You can see the, the right gastric there coming off from the hepatic artery proper. The hepatic artery proper then also has left and right branches. So that's the left branch, oops, left branch of the hepatic artery proper, and then that's the right branch of hepatic artery proper, which is going to be the origin for the cystic artery that, uh, that we can see in a moment. The other branch of the common hepatic, which is up there is the gastroduodenal artery. That gastroduodenal artery uh, is going to give rise to the right gastroomental artery. You can see coming across there. That's going to serve the stomach and the greater omentum along the greater curvature. That's met by the left gastroomental artery, which is a branch of the splenic. Another uh, term for gastroomental is gastroepiploic, um, and so you can you can say either; those are interchangeable. And those gastroomental arteries will have both gastric branches serving the stomach, and omental branches serving the omentum. Here we can see a better view of the hepatic artery proper. Here, so here is hat coming up this way, and here we can see the left branch of HAP, and here we can see the right branch of HAP, and coming off of the right branch, right there, tucked away behind the, uh, the common hepatic duct, is the cystic artery, heading out to and serving the gallbladder. The cystic artery, as you may recall, uh, can reliably be found within the hepatobiliary triangle. That hepatobiliary triangle uh, has three sides to it. There's the cystic duct, there's the common hepatic duct, and then there's the visceral surface of the liver. And we can see here that Yes, indeed, the cystic artery is being conveyed through the hepatobiliary triangle.
And then finally, the, uh, the splenic artery. Uh, in this session, we're not yet at the point where we'll have reflected the stomach away and uh, moved through the, the pancreas to see this. But we can see the, uh, the distal portion of the splenic artery here, and we can see exactly how torturous and curvy that is. So that splenic artery will give off short gastric branches, which we can see here. Those short gastric branches are serving the, uh, the fundus of the stomach. It's also going to give off splenic branches to the spleen. And then finally, the left gastroomental artery, which you can see winding down around here, or left gastroepiploic artery, which will anastomose with the right gastroomental artery of the gastroduodenal artery. Um, and like its counterpart, it has both gastric branches and omental branches. So we've discussed the celiac trunk and its branches and their branches and what they serve. Thank you very much for your time.